In today's video, we'll be goggling at a hundred naked men. Ooh! Enjoying both sides of the great British summer weather and swanning around in Southport. So, pack your lunchbox. No, not that. And join us for a cracking day out. Hello and welcome to Postcard a Pint. I'm Rachel. I'm Wills. And that's Keith. <laughs> and today we're going to take in a bit of art. And we're going to the seaside. Yay! I'd like to say it was a bright and sunny day, but it wasn't. Someone's excited to be out. Yes, folks, we're in Crosby, just north of Liverpool. Now we're off to find some art. Well, we can see where we would have parked and paid if we'd have followed the signs, and we can see the beach, the entrance to the beach. So we're going to head back and get on the other side of this wall. Only one minute into today's adventure, and we've already taken a wrong turn. How very postcard and a pint. Come on, British weather, it's supposed to be June. It's freezing. This is the Marine Lake at Crosby, just next to the beach. As you can see, there's a couple of nutters giving it a bit of windsurfing, and I, I don't know why I'm wearing these. It's a typical uh, summer's day in June. Let's carry on to the beach. It's a pleasant walk through this park on your way to the beach. As well as the water sports lake, there's also a wildlife pond. They even have black swans. Pretty rare. On we go. Ooh, it's looking sandy. I think we may be there. What is it with that sky? It's a really vast beach, but this is what we've come to see. We've come here today to check out Anthony Gormley's modern art installation. It's made up of a hundred cast iron figures stretched over three kilometers on Crosby Beach. Let's check it out. On first impressions, it's hard to see what is a statue and what is a living human. But as you walk closer, there's something strangely melancholy and pensive about these statues. This installation is called Another Place. The creator of these statues, Anthony Gormley, said that the installation was a poetic response to the individual and universal sentiments associated with emigration. Sadness at leaving, but the hope of finding a new future in another place. At each high tide, the installation is submerged underwater. There's a striking contrast between the stillness of the statues and the harsh industrial background. Each statue is said to reflect either a feeling of hope or one of sorrow. It's incredible to see what nature has done to each statue. They're all so different. Each and every face is so different and says so much. Another place was first exhibited in Germany in 1997, followed by Norway and then Belgium. It moved here to Crosby, its now permanent home, in 2005. I think for us, it's a particularly poignant home for this work. So many people left from Liverpool in search of new lands. So many of the Welsh to Patagonia and my ancestors for the USA in the gold rush. Come and see this work for yourself. It really is something else. But you will get mucky from the mucky sand and the mucky dogs. Beautiful. Now, Wills, should you really be filming a man's dingle-dangle at such a close range? Hmm. 
And here's some info of how they erected the statues. No pun intended. We love this one. Short-sighted Sid looking out to sea. And did you know that Anthony Gormley modelled these statues on his own naked body? Thank the Lord we didn't use wills. Weather still not great, Rach. What an absolutely moving piece of art. It's, it's incredible, really enjoyed that. Never been before and it's not that far away from where we live. So we're gonna head into Crosby now, walk down the street back to the car, maybe grab something to eat, maybe not, and then head up somewhere else. We haven't planned today. We tried planning last time, went totally wrong. So no plans today. Let's see where we end up. Off we went to find some life and possibly some food. This looks all right. It was a lovely little modern cafe and the food was gorgeous and freshly cooked, not mass produced and very welcome after our windy beach walk. Cheers. We started walking back to the car and found this little gem. This is the former home of Thomas Henry Ismay, the founder of the White Star Line. If only houses could tell stories. As we made our way back, it became apparent that we had walked a lot further than we thought, and we were now desperate for a wee. The toilets were very well signposted. Mm, very well signposted. Sadly, despite numerous signs, we couldn't find them. OK, this is getting ridiculous. We're now in the middle of a housing estate, still following signs for toilets. Somebody's having a West Ham scarf. In the end, we asked a friendly local and she put us on the right track. But we had no cash. We've just been very naughty. We've just been into this pub for a free wee. Who's going to pay 40p? Not on a bargain day out. Oh, we feel so much better now we've had a wee. Phew. Anyway, we weren't sure what to do next, so we've decided to go to Southport because it's only 10 miles-ish that way. So, off we go. It was about a 25 minute drive. In a strange turn of events, the sun has come out. We've arrived in Southport, parked in Morrison's, done some shopping, not naughty this time, did some shopping. We're gonna, that gives us three hours free in the car park. Let's go take a look at Southport. Southport has a small theme park called Pleasureland. It used to be owned by Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Check out last week's vlog for more on that one. Having checked on TripAdvisor, it doesn't have the best reviews these days. We didn't go in, so we can't really give a review. One thing we did learn, though, is book online. You'll save a tenner. Ooh, we do love a miniature railway. This railway claims to be the oldest continuously running 15-inch gauge railway in the world. She's ready. And we're off. The track was built by Mr G. V. Llewellyn in 1911 and opened on the 17th of May 1911 at 3pm. Very precise. The price is either £3 one way or £4 return. We went one way as it would drop us off by the pier. You get a lovely view of the marine lake as you trundle along. Today we were riding on the locomotive Wild West. Time to get off and admire the locomotive. Now where's this pier? That'll be it! Southport Pier is the second longest pier in the UK at 1,108 metres long. Couldn't find any of those last week now. The views off the side as you walk are beautiful, but the beach looks a bit muddy. If over a 1,000 metre walk sounds too much for you, there is always this little train that goes up and down if you fancy it. As we said, there are some stunning views. But I'm sorry, Southport, your pier's a bit boring. Where's the benches and kiosks? There are only seats by cafes, and there aren't many of those. 
few shops selling the great British seaside must-haves? Jellyfish! It's all just a bit brown. All right. At the end of the pier, you come to the new pavilion. It has a cafe and toilets on site, but what we loved was the old Penny Arcade. The arcade is full of vintage mechanical amusement machines. You change up a £1 coin and get six old pennies. As you know, we had no cash with us today, so couldn't play. But we loved looking at them, so different to today's twinkling LEDs. Penny Falls Old School. Love it. Oh, hello. This one looks a little bit risque. I wish I had some pennies. Now, I did try this one as I had 10p. It told me nothing. There is obviously absolutely nothing in my future. Brilliant. The pavilion building may not be the prettiest from the outside, but the views from in it are stunning. We've never seen a collection this big of vintage arcade machines. If you're into that, then this is definitely worth a visit. At the end of the pier is this lovely obelisk and a cracking view of Blackpool. A popular attraction from 1903 was an array of divers, typically diving from the tea house roof. One of the most notable was Professor Frank Gadsby, a one-legged diver. Blackpool's over there somewhere, Rach. The sun's come out, we see it shine, it must be postcards ice cream time! Happy! Back down the pier we went, enjoying ice cream, the views, and people who were way cooler than us. Before long, we were back at Marine Lake. From here, you can take a number of boat rides, from a gentle motorboat, a leisurely cruise, or something more fast-paced. Southport Pier. Hello Marine Lake. Thoughts on the pier then, Rach? We really enjoyed that walk along the pier, second longest pier in Great Britain. It is though, don't hate me for this, a bit of a disappointing pier. Um, compared to London, no, compared to Blackpool, there's not really a lot going on. There's no benches or only benches by eating places. Lovely ice cream. The old um, amusements and penny slots were fantastic. They were so good to see. Just sad I didn't have a pound coin, so I couldn't change it up. It wasn't having me 10 peas. But we're gonna go now to a different amusement and fingers crossed I can have my fill of the 2 pea falls. Come on. You enter this one through a hall of mirrors. Ooh, you need a better bra than that, love. Mmm, attractive. I was back on familiar ground and armed with a few 10 peas to change down to 2 peas. Let's be Avenue. Wills obviously wandered off whilst I was having my 2 pea fun. I'm a winner! The name of this arcade is Silcox Funland. Yes, it's a bit tired, but it's still loads of fun. Ask the banker. Now, as you know, I'm not one to play these games for the stupid tickets you get these days. I'm more your cold, hard cash kind of gal. But today I thought, no, let's take these tickets and cash out. What was I going to get? 
two tiny packets of space candy. You know, that pure on sugar stuff that makes fireworks in your mouth. But hey, I found a pound coin just lying there. I'm on profit. Now let's skedaddle. There are statues of the old pier divers just outside. All right, Frank. And did you know, back in the day, Charlie Chaplin once played this pier? It certainly does. All in all, it's a very pleasant area and had a great vibe with live music playing outside this bar. We decided to head back to our car up the other side of the lake. There were loads of birds there. I believe you can spot grey lag goose, Canada goose, mute swan and Eurasian oyster catcher, amongst others. We loved watching this family feed them. Thanks Southport, you've been amazing! Southport, what a lovely place, who knew? It's a shame we haven't had time to go into the town. We spent most of our time on the pier and around the lake. Maybe another day, but it's a gorgeous sunny day now. You'd never have thought that this morning. Everyone's out and about, eating ice cream, having an absolutely summer Sunday's afternoon. Champion. Feeling rather nostalgic ourselves, we thought, let's ride the Ferris wheel. Get some cracking views and record the cheers bit. We bought a can of Sprite, got into our gondola, and then failed to press record. It was a cracking ending too. Probably one of the best we've ever done. Being the perfectionists we are, we did it twice and failed to press record. Twice. Absolute idiots. Well, the long and the short of it was that we were going to drive back to Crosby and look at another place, the statues once again more submerged. Come on. There was a totally different vibe there this time as the weather was now beautiful and the tide was on its way in. This time it felt calm, serene and peaceful. Thanks for this incredible work, Anthony Gormley. Well, we're back home now and it's Friday night before this video goes out on the Sunday and as you'll have seen from the video... We failed. We certainly did. We got on that Ferris wheel. We filmed a lovely little... We're going to go off to the statues again now and then we're going to cut back here for cheers to the good times. Didn't it record? No, not only once. Didn't twice. it record twice? And what we would like to say is we don't like doing this bit from home. The whole plan with the channel was to see some lovely places and also explore some lovely pubs. Some nice pubs, tell you a bit of history, showcase yeah. a beer or two. Yeah, but we're normally driving, we're normally in a day, so we can't do it. So we have to have a shandy or a coke and um, that's a bit rubbish. But we are going to try and do that a bit more in future. We are in future. So do you think it's time for the like? Yeah, absolutely. It would be really, we're doing so, we're so chuffed with how many we subscribers are. we're getting at the moment yeah. and the watch hours and all of that. But it really does help if you do the button thing, yep. the likey thing. Uh, we'd be, love it if you would subscribe to the channel as well. That would be ace. Yeah, thank you for all the lovely comments mm. we've got. And we've made so many friends. We have indeed. So to all our friends, I think we should say. We should say. Cheers to the good times. times. Two of Gormley's statues in a dark room and they hear this spooky noise and one goes, Oh, we're statue. Oh 